Hello, my name is May, and today it is time for a book review. So I have three major loves in my life. Yoga, plants, and books. And today we're going to be discussing one of my favourite authors, the wonderful Sarah J Maas. So with the release of A Court of Silver Flames, our girl Sarah has finally made the jump from YA to adult fiction, which apparently is best done with a whole load of f verbally and physically. The fourth instalment of the Akatar series follows the storyline of Nestor and Cassian as they in countless different ways around a magical house. If you were looking for the sweet, passionate love story surrounding Favour and Rysand in the original trilogy, this isn't it. Some parts are just plain crude and a little off-putting. I honestly didn't know there were so many ways to describe a glitter cannon. Take a drink every time I say unicorn horns in this video. Cassian fans, however, rejoice. In this book, your boy participates in swordplay of a whole other caliber. As proud as that one. <laughs> okay, so now the smut rant has been released from my system. Thought of. Let's get into the plot. In A Court of Silver Flames, we follow Feyre's sister Nesta as she learns to cope with the harrowing events of the last book. We're also introduced to a potential threat of a new war with the human queens, as well as Cassian's massive twinkle stick. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Also, don't fret, this review will contain no spoilers as we'll mainly be focusing on character development. Except, obviously, that they f***ing a lot, but come on, it practically says that in the blurb. Firstly, let's talk about Nesta. I was always a fan of hers in the original trilogy, and honestly, it's quite refreshing to read a main character who is best described as unlikable. I mean, do I really need to listen to her vivid descriptions of Cassian's happy hose? Probably not. But the switch in perspective from Feyre to a character far more flawed was definitely an interesting route to take. Nesta does shy comparatively compared to her sister as a female lead, and I imagine this book definitely only stemmed from an abundance of Cassian fans. But I'm seeing a lot of hate towards her on the internet that she definitely doesn't deserve. Sure, the whole novel is just a progression of her grief, but the emotions that come into play are very well portrayed, and I'd imagine a pretty realistic reaction. This book, however, is simply a classic Sarah J Mass trope. Girl facing internal conflict, learns how to control her emotions with the help of a ridiculously handsome female, in turn, becoming an absolute badass. See Aelin and Feyre. Speaking of strong female characters, god damn were we graced with this one. Gwen is now definitely up there on my list of favourite Sarah J Mass ladies. Although my true love and number one spot still lies with the stunning Man in Blackbeak. Without giving too much away, if you are not in love with the Nesta Gwen Emery relationship by the end of the book, you are wrong. It's so wholesome it made me cry and it offers a really important message. Let's move on to the boys, or to one boy in particular. Cassian is obviously a huge fan favourite. Everybody loves that charming warrior type that Sarah is so fond of writing. However, this time we receive the sweet caring Cassian alongside a spring of toxic masculinity in the sexual sense. Now some of you all might be into that. You might like him on the more sexually domineering side. I understand the concept of showing him in another light, but I just found it super unattractive. And yes, I completely understand it is all preference. Some people find this kind of erotic writing very sexy. I do not. Which all the Cassian fans just come for me now. <laughs> <laughs> like Cassian's Fireworks. a hundred times in this book. <laughs> now I'm done. Although Cassian is of course the same endearing character we all know. Throughout the majority of the book, his main internal dialogue is based off of his high sex drive. Although we do later receive an explanation for this, I've already endured 500 pages of it. This male perspective is of course in comparison to the original books, which it's important to note are written in first person from Feyre's perspective. So for all we know, Rice could be a dirty bug or two. All in all, despite his interesting sexual habits, I'm talking about the very first sexy scene it's just weird. He is still a 10 out of 10 character. However, he does have approximately zero character growth throughout this entire book, besides the knowledge 
of this huge custard cream, which starts the debate as to whether he should have remained a secondary character. On another note, his relationship between Asriel and Rysand, yes, I know I say it wrong, I'm four books in, so I'm refusing to change it now, is still incredibly sweet, which for me was a running theme in this book. I was way more captivated by the friendships than the main romance line. I won't divulge too much into the Feyre Rysand story, which is still very prominent throughout the book, but as always, they never disappoint. Nor does my boy Asriel, the most underrated male in the entire bloody thing. If we're continuing this series, can we please have some as love? In conclusion, is there a storyline beneath all the eroticism? Yes, I suppose so. If you condense an 800 page book into only 400 pages. Sarah is an amazing author and no one can deny her writing style is stunning. Her words just flow together. And as always, she has blessed us with a beautiful world filled with aggressively beautiful people. As a standalone, A Course of Silver Flames may have held up. As a sequel, it's way off the mark of the original trilogy. It's simply not as captivating. This book for me is a very shaky four out of five stars. Literally bumped up only by the last 100 pages. As much as I disliked the sheer amount of heavy petting, how old am I? <laughs> Damn, she smashed the ending. As quite common when reading a Sarah J Mass novel, I completely forgot to breathe through the entire thing. But that is it, you guys. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts surrounding this book. Not the dirty ones, I don't want to hear those. I read a lot of YA and adult fantasy. So for all my bookish friends, I plan to upload at least two book-related videos a month. But for now, please do subscribe down below. I upload new videos every single Sunday. Stay wild, stay free, and I will see you all later.